Hello, this is John from Revit for Interior Designers. Today we continue our series on how to modify railings in Revit. And I know it could be a complicated topic at times. So in particular, today we'll focus on how to edit the top rail of a guardrail, which is the topmost member that prevents you from falling over balconies and they are along the edge of a stair as you ascend. So, let's take a look how it's done. Here, I won't bother with anything else. I'll just draw a, a stair. I'll make it one run and accept it. I'll go to 3D. I'll get rid of this to simplify this exercise. I'll tell this to be uh, the uh, pipe guardrail. So it comes with a handrail on the inside there. See it there? Let's do this in shaded mode. You see it right there? So tab, click, that grabs the handrail. See the handrail family? Tab, click, that grabs the top rail family right there. That's the family that's typed inside the family. And then the rest, grabbing it completely, grabs the entire railing system, like grabbing a curtain wall, for example. So let's customize that one. So I'm going to grab this so I, as not to erase it permanently. I'm going to edit type duplicate, and I'm going to call it uh, railing guardrail pipe 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 no handrail i don't want a handrail that's my custom design right there and under the uh, handrail here you see the position i'm going to just say none and immediately it disappears see it's gone no more handrail there okay so there's there's the design of this so far. And next, I'd like to tell the top rail to do something special. And by, well, that, by that I mean, you'll see here, I've extended it out and then I turned it into the floor. Whereas at the top, I simply extended it out a foot and curled it back into the last post. So the two different settings. So how do I get those settings to work? So let's go back into our family. Instead of fixing it here, I'm going to fix it under the families menu. I'm going to go into here and choose families. And then I'm going to go to railings top rail. So let's go to railings right here. And here is uh, railings and here's top rail right there. Top rail type there. These are my top rail types. These three, those are the ones I have currently. So what I want to do is make a new one. I'm going to take the one that's using, this one is here is an inch and a half circular. I'm going to duplicate it and make a new one with new settings. So I want to duplicate it here. I'm going to take my copy and rename it. I'm going to call it circular uh, one and a half inch post extension. And then when I double click on it, I open up the family menu just for that top rail. You don't get the entire railing family here. It's just the top rail, which is why this might be simpler. It's less confusing. When I made a new addition to this list by duplicating one of these and copying it and calling it post extension. And then here I'm going to change the settings uh, so it looks a certain way. So, for example, here, extension at the at the beginning or bottom. I want this to go to the floor. That's a choice. Where do I want to go to the floor? Well, I want it to go into a floor a foot away from the last step plus a tread. I'll make it extra long. So it takes an 11 inch tread plus another foot. And that determines how long it's going to extend beyond at the bottom. And at the top or the end, I'm going to say, go to the post. Because we know a wall does. We know it curls into a wall. We did that earlier for the handrail. We're going to do a post. So it's going to turn into the post and I'm going to have it stick out a foot 
and then it'll curl back into the last post. And we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to make a brand new top row design. And I'm going to accept this. So done. You now have a new design right there under the families for the railing top rail. You now have that piece completed. Now it's just a matter of you telling the railing to use that top rail instead of the one it has right now. That's it. So if I were to click on this, I can then go to edit type. And here is the top rail right there. I've already told the handrail here to be none. So that one's out of the picture. History. But here it's using the circular inch and a half. You see it's using this one here. But I know that this menu now has one, two, three, four options. So when I click on this, it loads these four options into the top rail menu. So this is a family that launches the top rail family, which is this here. And it has four options. So when I do this, I'll see those four options here. So this loads these into the menu. If you delete one of these, one of these will drop. And there's my design right there. Click. And I have nothing else to do. I mean, I can, obviously, I can just add a material if I want. But all this other work that I've done here gets passed into here because they're one and the same. This menu is the menu that I was working on down here. That's the point I wanted to make. So although railings have families out of families, you can simplify the process and just take apart the part that you want to modify by finding it here under families and manipulating it. If I hit OK, it passes that design into my railing. And I hit OK, and there it is. That's the extension. And you see here, it curls at the top back into the post. That's the post design. This is the floor design. And I decided to make this a foot plus a, plus a tread, so 1 foot 11. You can make it whatever number you like. So those are, are some of the options you have. So to prove my point here, uh, you'll know that when you make walls, these are all your walls. And then you have to click on a wall and then hit a type and then suddenly you get a menu. Well, walls, any kind of family are located in these menus as well. So here's walls. And you have three kinds of walls, basic wall, curtain walls, or stack walls. If you open up the basic wall, you'll see here are all your walls. And so if I choose this and I right click and I um, duplicate it and call it something else, or I simply go to type properties, I can see all the menu options that are available for exterior brick on CMU. So type properties loads the family and I can make changes here and it saves it under that name or I can duplicate it and save it. But this is the same thing as going up to the top of the menu and accessing it here. They're, these are one and the same. Some people find this easier than having to dig through the menus at the top. Um, you can decide whichever method to use. And so there's my, my design uh, for the guardrail, which got rid of the, the handrail design there. So before we move on, are there any questions? And I'll, I will get into like doing custom designs and shapes uh, uh, during this tutorial or during this uh, presentation today. But I just want to make sure you know you understand where, I, where we are. If you have any trouble, let me know. Shoot me a, shoot me a message and we'll cover that topic. Okay, how about no questions? Okay, so when I look at this project, if I go back to my floor plan, so my, my views, my first floor plan. In fact, I'll, I'll even, I'll just, I'll just do it here, I guess. Uh, if I, if I cut a section through here, 
and I just want to look at that that out that outside uh, guardrail. So what can I do with this? Like, what if this design? Because they only have three: wall mounted, floor mounted, or post. So the only three options you have. What if I have a design idea that's more custom than those few options? So Revit goes a step further. I can actually get into that top rail independently. Again, we know we can hit tab, click. And because it's part of a railing family, it's pinned here. So if I unpin it, then suddenly this menu becomes active. Then I can go into the type, and I can make some changes, so on and so forth. We also know I can find the exact same family down here at the bottom of the screen with the families menu and make changes there, and it'll pass them right into this menu. So if I take this drawing of the railing, I'm looking at an elevation, and I use these menus, edit rail, you'll notice that when I touch this, I can't touch it yet. You notice here it says edit path right there. If I chose that menu, click, I can actually grab these, these paths. Because what this is, is the, um, is the uh, sweep command, where you draw, you draw a path and you give it a profile, and it chases that profile and creates this design. And we've done sweeps before in class. So this is doing something very similar. This is the path. The sweep it already has. It already has the shape of the profile here. It's a circle. And so here, I can manipulate this blue path using any commands I have here. So if I took this line and then drag it over to here, um, or if I drag it or do I, uh, I can redraw it. I can just redraw it here. Draw an arc from here to here like this, for example. You see it's, it's manipulating uh, that path. If, for example, I go from here to here, do something. You can see it's making changes to that that path and as I delete these objects as I deleted that vertical member this is the replacement I'd have to hyperextend this beyond the bottom here and then cl clip it off at the floor to get that to look like it's embedded in the ground but I just drew a new shape here a new path by erasing what it had and drawing a new path using these drafting tools so that when I accept this and accept this I have to do it twice then this is the new design, see? Now I could clip off this little piece here that's beneath the ground there uh, with another command, but as you can see, it's doing something a lot more custom than we'd anticipated. So if I go back to the top here, I could grab this piece here under the same token, hit, uh, well first click on be careful though if i'm in plan view and i grab that railing and i choose edit path it's a line that line right there is what it's manipulating like this line stops here and then there's a rule that says add another foot that's why it got longer so any manipulation of this drafting makes the railing longer yet this is the path it's following to draw the handrail in a plan view so be careful that when you're in an elevation view, you can't grab the handrail and do edit path. That's the, the direction the handrail is headed. You want to grab just the top rail. Tab, click. That's the top rail. Then you can edit the top rail. Then you can decide that I'm going to edit the path and do something different. For example, maybe I'm going to put a, or an arc on this or something, whatever. And then this vertical member here is no longer useful. Maybe I want that to happen or some other kind of design. Again, if you hit apply and then you accept it, this is the profile it's using. These menu items are very similar to making a sweep. That's kind of that, that, that they're based on that logic. And so that's gonna draw a sweep using that profile. And if you hit load profile, you can find yourself uh, another uh, railing. I don't even know if they have 
I, mean, I, don't, I don't see a family for uh, uh, railing cross sections. You have to make your own and load it into Revit. But these are the types of railings you can load into Revit. It'll probably take a generic uh, profile family as well. Uh, but then you load it, accept it, and then there you go. And then for whatever reason you don't like it, you can always click on it, edit the handrail, and then reset it. And it goes back to the original shape it is, it's expecting at the top and bottom, by the way, because it's one big path. See that? So you lost whatever customization you may have done by doing a reset. Okay. So that is the, the logic here.